I had actually kind of had grown jaded uh, with the television business, the local news business, because uh, there had been a lot of corporate consolidation. And, uh, you know, there was less autonomy at the local level uh, for reporters like myself and anchors to pursue stories that, you know, I felt like were really important uh, to our audience. There were a lot of mandates uh, from the corporate offices and, you know, edicts from on high, and we're going to focus on this. And, you know, I think that's problematic um, with our country right now, where you have a lot less local news, a lot less uh, investment in local news, and you have less coverage of the places where the rubber really meets the mo ro uh, road in our democracy, and that's in your county commission meetings, your school board meetings, your city council meetings. <laughs>
have, and we're all fighting to protect that. And we still have, uh, fortunately, we still have this kind of uh, laboratory of ideas when it comes to different, you know, policies and prescriptions for problems we have in this country. And again, we're seeing that with this with this pandemic and completely different approaches from Cuomo and Gavin Newsom versus Ron DeSantis. And we know, you know, sometimes that doesn't work. And now I, I'm sure a lot of people are looking at the Florida model and say, maybe Florida man isn't so crazy. So that's kind of a winding narrative here. But, you know, why I'm attracted to you, Dave, and why I have you on our show is because this idea of free thought. And that's why I'm here at Newsmax now, because this provides me the platform to do the things I couldn't do um, as a traditional, quote unquote, news anchor. It's interesting. I asked you, John Bachman 101, a little bit about your history. We talked about COVID response, federalism, government, television, the whole thing. So before we go any further, you work for Newsmax. Yes. Isn't that some sort of far right crazy extremist network, John? That's what they tell me. You know, the, the funny thing is too, Dave, um, is it's all that, you know, of course, in some people's minds. And at the same time, you know, I'm a traitor for saying all the way back in December and just trying to tell the audience that yes, you know, the bar is very high for Joe Biden not to become president. I think we talked about this, like at a certain point, it was like a space shuttle that had launched into the sky. Uh, and if it didn't make it into space, into orbit, it was gonna be some sort of catastrophic explosion that would prevent it. And it never happened. I mean, we're here now. And it, you know, I think, you know, when you're taking flack from the extreme right, as we are, when you know, people calling me a traitor for calling Joe Biden the president elect, or from the far left, because you know, we just wanna do something simple as carry the president of the United States speech, which I think we were the only major network to do that uh, this week when the president was down at the border. I mean, he's still the president of the United States and his words still matter. And, and nobody really wants to do that. You know, that's just, you know, what we tried to do is kind of chart a different path and provide information that wasn't being provided for a lot of people. And that somehow, Dave, has become a radical idea. Do you find it sort of tough to be a news anchor in a time when not only is there cable news, obviously, and sort of the dying dinosaur of the, you know, the big three cable news channels, but now there's a whole bunch of other channels like Newsmax, then there's like the gajillion people on YouTube and podcasts and everywhere else, that finding a niche that actually makes sense, that's still true to who you are, uh, is, is sort of tough, just business-wise and everything else? Yes, I do. I think it is tough in some respects. I mean, I think, um, you know, there are very few places that can provide me this type of opportunity or other great people we have that work for us. I mean, you know, Chris Ruddy, our CEO, really is a believer in the idea of a big tent and, you know, individuality and, you know, the, the you know, um, competition of ideas. And, you know, that's what he promotes. And it was you know, kind of a random way that he and I met. I, you know, I talked about my background as a TV news reporter. I remember one day specifically, I woke up, was reading the newspaper, the Palm Beach Post, and I read a little blurb. There was a great political reporter who no longer works in local news. He's gone on to do other things. His name is George Bennett. He wrote about the fact that Sarah Palin was going to a place called Newsmax to visit. This was after uh, the 2008 presidential election. She was obviously a lightning rod. Uh, and I wanted to go meet Sarah Palin. I was fascinated by her, her story, uh, her appeal uh, to conservatives. And so I showed up at Newsmax, not knowing much about Newsmax. And uh, I worked the parking lot, met some of the people who showed up to, to meet Sarah Palin and asked them why they were interested in her. And they liked her outsider philosophy. Um, and, you know, at that same time, that's when I met Chris Ruddy, the CEO of Newsmax, and uh, he and I struck up a conversation. He and I talked about a lot of things. I had expressed at that point kind of my disillusionment with, um, you know, the local news business, and he gave me his business card and said, hey, let's go to lunch sometime. And, and at that point, I was interested in what he had to say about the, the business. And, you know, long story short, that was 10 years ago. And he had mentioned at that lunch the idea of starting a cable news network because he, he felt like there was a, a vast portion of America that even with Fox News and other conservative outlets that were not being reached. And so, you know, here we are all these years later to have this opportunity to be on your show, um, to have this, you know, new audience find us a, as an alternative and a compliment you know, to the spectrum of conservative uh, media that's available is just really humbling. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about the media instead of nonstop yelling, check out our media playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out the full episode playlist. They're both right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.